Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast for LGBT Plus Advancing. We are part of the Media Village family. I am Dr. Chris. I use she, her pronouns. And I have made a new friend that I need y'all to meet. So tell us who you are and what you do. Welcome, everyone. My name is Carlos Santiago, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Alliance for Inclusive and Multicultural Marketing, uh, AIM, uh, part of the ANA. I am also the CEO of my own consulting firm over 20 years, Santiago Solutions Group, and the co-architect of the measures of cultural relevance under the culture and inclusion accelerator that includes SIM. That is a lot of job titles. You must be very, <laughs> very busy. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a race. It's a race. You know, there's a lot of conversation maybe now more than ever about this idea of diversity and is it a benefit? Does it keep some people out? Are we taking prior leaders and taking away access to them? And you've been doing all this work and this research on diversity. Why is it so important that we study this at all? I think we make decisions based on how we were wired growing up. Um, and then also pass it through the filters of where we are right now and what we are hearing about those brands alignment with our own soul and purpose as humans. And brands are judged more and more often, especially by the younger segments, Gen Z and young millennial, millennials, based on that sense of purpose that is being reflected by the brands they choose to do business with. But what we're seeing in these new generations is that that sense of purpose has a lot more weight than even when we were that age. I love that, that sense of purpose that I know for me, it's it's obviously as we're here, it's what I do. It's also, I think, more than many of us realize it's who we are and it's what we stand for or what we stand against. It went from the brand of cheese I buy because it's the one I liked when I was a kid to does one of these brands of cheese represent the things I stand for? Absolutely. And that's really important when we're talking about LGBTQ because it's not just what LGBTQ that are about 7% of the total adult population, higher, much higher among Gen Z where one in five identifies with some part of that queer spectrum. But more importantly is that we need to keep in mind to add LGBTQ allies that tend to think along the same lines as LGBTQ. Plus there is a huge neutral population that don't care one way or the other. They're not persuaded by it, nor, the, nor um, distracted by it in a negative way. But when you combine those two segments of LGBTQ and allies, they're half of, total, half of the total U.S. population. So it's not the power of the trillions of dollars that LGBTQ, it's the total power of all the allies. <laughs> For every one LGBTQ person, there are five allies. Wow. It is, it is tremendous power to influence what gets bought or not bought based on, on issues that are dear to the heart of LGBTQ. But I wanted to to keep in mind also that at the foundation of LGBTQ issues is one about equality. And that is incredibly important to all consumers in the US um, that believe that brands should treat not only their employees, but their consumers with equality. And that is about 70% Five eighty percent of 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 uh, all Americans believe strongly that brands should be treating consumers and um, and employees uh, with equality. 
uh, and sexual orientation is one of those aspects, right? Um, beyond gender and race and so forth, um, that ranks extremely high over time in our survey, in our study of LGBTQ perceptions, as well as, as GLAD and others out there. It's really an amazing thing to sort of think about. I think we see the news so often finds when people get it wrong and it leads to conversations of boycott. And so many businesses obviously want to not be boycotted, but to think about the opposite of that and the way that people will flock to businesses and put money into businesses and advertise on the t-shirts or on their social media or with their friends for these businesses that are inclusive. The most significant finding that we uncover is that for every consumer supporting brands that are that back down from LGBTQ advertising, there are two consumers that would withdraw support from brands that acquiesce to anti-LGBTQ attacks. So we, we kind of like assume that when we hear of a boycott being uh, successful, it comes from anti-LGBTQ Americans. And in fact, it is from loyal, from 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 consumers that used to be loyal to a brand which are going are saying wait a minute i thought you were connecting with me all these years that you stood like an ally of lgbtq as a brand you 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 have destroyed that loyalty that i used to have with you so i'm not going to support you anymore and those consumers outnumber by two times, 1.8 to two times, those consumers that are just anti-LGBTQ. Right. I mean, I think so much now about the businesses, the organizations, the corporations that have been part of pride parades and they've had floats and they've had rainbows on their logos and they've been the ones out there with the rainbow, you know, temporary tattoos at those pride festivals and doing things for Pride events for all these years. And now that this has become a bit more polarizing for some people, so many of them have gone just quiet. We also celebrate those brands that um, are maintaining the level of support outside of Pride and with those public displays of support, um, like when the court allowed uh, the uh, uh, birthday cakes and the florets, right, uh, that they can discriminate. And we see brands like Absolute and Kenview commenting on that, you know, like we would never do that. And there, there are tens, if not hundreds of brands that have spoken up. Um, we tend to provide the focus many times in our media world to the brands that are silent, but there are many, many, many brands that should be celebrated for speaking up um, uh, in, in, in these uh, times of a lot of um, discourse, uh, negative discourse. And I think that one of the reasons that they are doing it is because yes, they have so much invested in it, they have done it the right way by doing it in a, in a profound way, um, not just with influencers, but with true intentionality, um, especially at the younger consumers, the Gen Z and the young millennials. Again, also going back to the original premise that for every LGBTQ, there, there are five um, allies and people who consider themselves part of that community. So um, they, they know where their, their, their loyalty base is. They know, they know very clearly who they are. In addition to the generalized allies, we've got the allies in that their parents, that these parents are not bringing in brands into the home that go against their child's identity. It just seems so easy as a way to do it, to just be so inclusive 
of all people, especially when there's 75 to 80 percent of people already wanting that. I think that brands are challenged by that definition of inclusive of all people, because what we have seen recently is that some brands, when they're scared, they opt to be selectively inclusive. So it's not LGBTQ, it's LGBTQ, leaving the trans out um, and radically changing courses in, um, in, in, in the public domain to do that. Um, and certainly we, we, we see at the same time, a lot of new content, especially on streaming uh, content, like heart stoppers and sex education, where, as you said, the alpha, uh, generation alpha is going through issues of acceptance in a very different way than we have seen in many of the, most of the content before these times of, yeah, their own struggles and their own um, um, journeys. So millennial parents are seeing that content and applauding it as authentic because their kids and their friends are embracing it, yet at the same time, they turn around and see that brands are being selectively inclusive. And what does that mean? Does that, is there such a term? Is there such a thing as selective inclusive? Or well, that means that they're not inclusive at all. Because sure. If we start picking where we're gonna be inclusive, then that's not inclusivity, right? Right. And and there is this belief sometimes, this misunderstanding that when brands or shows or films are inclusive, that it's convincing children to become something they're not. The mental health community has long proven, the researchers have long, decades and decades of proof. That's not true. People are who they are. It's just a question of whether they get to see who they are represented because none of us are just one thing, whatever our things are and looking at what that is and what it teaches our kids when they turn on the TV or they go to a social media page and they see 30 different people and all those people look different because the world is full of different types and different appearances of people. Yes, and it it makes a huge difference for brands. The reward is, is huge because ads that are culturally indifferent from an LGBTQ LGBTQ culture standpoint versus brands that are culturally authentic, we see brand trust being lifted by 162%, brand opinion by 122%, and purchase intent by 72%. So you could be neutral and kind of safe zone and not, not push any, make any waves, right? And not be culturally offensive, but you're culturally indifferent. But for brands that are really being authentic, again, to your point of reflecting all those aspects of the spectrum, of the queer spectrum, um, those brands are really rewarded. Uh, It is short-term with purchase intent and long-term with brand trust and brand opinion. Well, you know, I think when it comes to the long term, I'm looking forward to learning more from you long term. If you'll come back and tell us more things in the future. I hate that we have to close up. I just want to listen to all the things that you've researched and found. Are we able to access and see more of those statistics and research somewhere? Yes, uh, we are providing a copy of this study to uh, York Media Village and with a QR code to where to find it and where to find additional resources at our uh, site, our uh, AIM site and our Cultural Inclusion Accelerator site. I'm going to wrap us up for now. I am Dr. Chris. This has been Carlos. We are here with LGBT Plus Advancing, part of the incredible Media Village family. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much.